Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I have with me Sarah Potter, who was my main... <laughs> You're about to say hello there. <laughs> Going in my way. I didn't know anything about CrossFit until you started it and you yeah. posted it on Facebook, on Instagram. I just remember seeing those crazy videos of you yeah. being a badass. I am um, 33. An ex events planner. So I was a freelance events planner and I'm now four weeks shy of joining the police, which is so exciting. A little bit scary um, because it's such a change from what I kind of been, I've been used to doing for all these years. But it's something which I've wanted to do for years, and I think having a good level of fitness is is a kind of a great match for it. I'm really oh, I'm so excited. So I started when I was 26, 27. I'd kind of started considering it a few years earlier, but never really got kind of really into the the mindset of CrossFit until about 27 when I uh, joined CrossFit Worcestershire. I couldn't really say I had a real influence. I've always been really competitive and I was guided to consider CrossFit as a way of improving my overall fitness. I'm really competitive and netball and going to the kind of standard gym was just getting a little bit tiring mentally and everyone I'd spoken to, friends who did it, said you need, you need to give it a go, you need to try it, you could be okay at it so I thought yeah why not you can say great <laughs> well yeah but at the time I thought yeah I'll give it a go and then yeah. I realized actually mm -hmm. I'm pretty pretty good so we're gonna do 21 15 9 21 alternating dumbbell snatches at 15 kg followed by over the dumbbell burpees and then some jumping lunges to finish and Sophie's really excited <laughs> But you know what, we've been, I've been waiting so long to work out with her. So originally I did martial arts, so something oh. called Aikido. But then every time I finished a session, I would watch the runners on the track outside and just would say to my mum and dad, I want to be a runner. That was all I wanted to be. I wanted to be a runner and I'm quite short and stumpy, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. Um, so when I was 11, I joined Bromgum Reddit Athletics Club. I was there until I was about eight, 17, 18. I just, it was incredible predominantly focus on track because of my size and I've got a good sprint I'm um, 400 and 800 um, ran for the county so I think for me that was really where um, my parents could see potential that you know mm -hmm. we've got quite a fit girl here we've got a really good community I think that's shown throughout lockdown um, mm -hmm. Paul Walls the coach um, head coach he lent, kind of lent out all of his equipment We've had some really good programming um, and everyone's now kind of because we're allowed to having kind of pocket group sessions taking place and the weather's been great for it mm. um, and it's just it's just got a lovely vibe I've also trained at uh, CrossFit Surly Hall C unit and that again is a great box yeah. yeah you walk in there and even even though I'm not a regular member I used to walk in and you know everyone would be hugging you and and it's just it's, it's got a really nice feel a really nice Vest Malvern hike Tuesday and yes, yes, yeah, I trained oh. twice. Oh, just because I had a load of energy. So uh, yes, I would say I, me and a girl who actually I'd only met the night before we competed with Suze. <laughs> we went to uh, Inferno in mm. Cardiff, um, and it's it's very it was very much up our street. A lot of cardio, minimal gymnastics. But we we turned up. We hadn't met. We sent a few WhatsApps, and. We were against some serious competition. I think there were about 100 teams, and you know, training had been a little bit on and off for both of us. So we had no, there were there were no expectations, and we came out second. <laughs> and my coach was he was obviously very chuffed, and I think he thought, oh yes, this is good. Well, well done, pops. We had to do a sprint finish at the end, and because of that said sprint finish, that bumped us up into second. So always finish well. That's all I say, especially in, especially in comps. I think that kind of definitely made both of us think, oh, actually, well, you know, we've, we've done good. And then the next year, I went back with my friend Jen, who I train with at CFW, and we came second again. And we, we actually won, I think, two or three of the workouts, and we beat the boys in one of them. Just like to add that. I 
think as I get older, I'm still as competitive, but I'm competing against these spring chickens who uh, have so much energy, but I'm still competitive in myself that I still want to win or, mm. you know, want to be amongst them. So I, I don't do myself any favours, but I just, I go into full stealth mode and I just, you know, I can, I can grin and grin and bear a lot of a lot of pain but then you know I have thought maybe when I am a master looking at competing individually and I think that that will be the next challenge for me and um, getting to a the right mindset to take it to the next level as a master it's crazy to think I'm a master I'll be a master soon like, it's great it's a great place to be <laughs> we love masters they're such a lovely bunch they, they are a lovely bunch <laughs> I'm, I'm still gonna I'm still gonna bring it yeah A lovely time. <laughs> I'm warm now. Who likes seriously? Who likes burpees? Comment below. <laughs> I, I get inspired when someone comes in. It could be one of my friends or my mom, for example, who's really struggled with um, mobility because she had a back operation a few years ago, and she's starting to do prehab work which is kind of related to CrossFit and we're slowly starting to get her on that journey mm. and just seeing her make seeing her confidence grow and Ruth Pearson who you know had a baby and documented that journey and then you look at her now and think you know you she's such an inspo nice shorts by the way there are, there are there's too many people there's too there's too many people to pinpoint one person you want to be like Helen Nutter yeah, maybe Helen Nutter, because we all love Helen, and she, and she knows she knows I I adore her, and I had the pleasure of competing with her. How did that come about? Again, through Owen at Metal Co. He threw this team together. It was me, a guy called Ben Rayworth, Helen, and Chris Mai. We were in the elite for the first sanctioned event, and I've never experienced anything like it. The worm. I think it was a 140, 160 kilogram worm. It was so, it was so bad. At one point, I looked like a teapot holding it. Again, I threw myself into a very uncomfortable situation, and um, yeah, I'll always be grateful to Owen for that. Although it hurt. So we follow programming from Four Walls at CFW, um, and he he recently completed a membership with Red Pill, um, so Phil Mansfield, and it's fantastic the way he kind of transfers all that knowledge into our programming. It's been, it's been a real journey for us to kind of move from the typical CrossFit workouts to, again, CrossFit workouts, but with the add-on of Red Pill um, mentorship as well. And I think we were, we were a much better box for it, in all honesty. Oh, oh. <laughs> My biggest challenge has been mastering the art of gymnastics. Um, I know you, you feel the same. Uh, so yeah, we, we we share those feelings. Um, mainly because I'm quite a big girl in the sense of you know I had thighs when I was born. I'm a good <laughs> seventy kilograms, maybe seventy two after lockdown. Trying to do pull ups, kipping pull ups, butterfly pull ups, chest to bar when fatigued, carrying quite a lot of weight yeah. has its challenges. I am an awkward gymnast. I don't flow. I'm not. I don't. I don't. You know blow into a Chester bar, but the butterfly like Chester bar. I just get up and find some strength. And I think that has been the biggest challenge mentally to just think, you know what, just give it a go. And I can do ring muscle ups, but it took me a long time to mentally kind of allow myself to give them a go. 
And then once I've got them, then I actually quite enjoy them. To all you gymnasts out there, I'm very jealous. But I could probably beat you in burpees. Oh, I love a burpee! <gasps> ah, squat cleans. Squat cleans, anything, you know, back squat, front squat, anything where I can use my thighs. Yeah, and I, I feel comfortable. I think, yeah, I feel comfortable doing anything like that. Lunges, love, love me a lunge. That's a nice demo. Not the greatest, yeah, here we go. So yeah, definitely, you know, and things like rowing, you know, where I can really get, I get so much power from my legs. And I think that's, that's down to running, obviously, you know, following various programs, but, you know, I've always been strong. Because we're coming out of lockdown now, so they may not be anywhere Yeah, near. but, you know, once um, here, that's all that matters. So PB, I got to 100 squat clean, and I didn't really try and go any higher. I think, to me, the pinnacle was getting to 100 and standing it up, and I cried. I've got the video. I cried when, and it it wasn't a smooth. Let me just add that it didn't look very pretty, and there were a lot of comments saying you made it a lot harder for yourself. But just to say, you've got a hundred yeah. clean and jerk, ninety. Um, but I, but you know, I'd like to think I could get more if I really apply myself. So this year, they're serious numbers though. Well, serious. yeah, they are. They are good. They are good numbers. Snatch now, we don't talk about snatch. I'm not great. I remember I got um, criticised live via the CrossFit Games channel at the sanctioned event for my snatch. So you, you've never had that. Should we insert it here? <laughs> Tell us about that then. Oh gosh. So it was a one rep max snatch. So when it came out and I knew it was snatch, I knew I was in trouble. And we were, it was me and Helen Nutter and Helen has the most beautiful snatch you've probably all seen it next to helen as she's do, as she's snatching it's great to watch yeah. but then i step up and they you know they document you know my setup and then i i do this muscle snatch slash i don't know what it was i think at 65 and i got it up and it just looks so awkward and they were commenting saying oh she's in trouble why you know why do we think she's snatching like this and they were waiting for my next snatch to see if i improved and i didn't it was even worse and um they were commenting on my mobility you know all constructive criticism you know and i and it's everything i know but when it's stream live and when you have people from my box saying you know for a minute and a half they were talking about you where whereas everyone else was doing beautiful snatches i don't know why they focused on me and then helen stepped up and did the most beautiful snatch and then they praised her a lot. So yeah, that was a, a surreal moment. <laughs> They're flagging her off, but still, I'm proud of you. Oh, um, no, but at the end of the day, no one's perfect and that's really important to take yeah. away and that, you know, you're not professing to be. No, I have a terrible snatch. A rival for <laughs> Tia, Tia Claire to me, are you? You're not professing no. to be that. No. And um, for your journey and what you've done and what you've accomplished is phenomenal. Oh, I remember thanks. that. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, got my like mother hat on now. <laughs> lunges, just jumping lunges are just great on any day. I know you do. <laughs> on any day. She lapped me. Well, yeah, it's not a, an official lap because it was. Well, we pretty much just end, end in weights. But she did it. Can we do some highlight like now? Round two. I never know anyone procrastinate as much. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You do you. We Say you. you do you. I have no aspiration to go to the CrossFit Games. I just, you know, it's, I love watching it, but there's, I haven't got that, I'm competitive, but I've not got that drive to yeah. ever even think, you know what, would I, you know, could I, if I put five years of solid training in, could I ever be that good? But I just, I don't have that desire to. Mm. I, I love watching, especially UK athletes, and there's so many people coming through. It's so exciting to see their journey, and I applaud them, and I'm all, I'm right behind them. Now, 2019, I suffered a really close um, family loss. So my, my gorgeous dad passed. It was a shock. Um, 
and it just it just threw us threw us all into <laughs> such turmoil. It did, Elvis. It really did. Um, and we didn't really know how to navigate ourselves around it. And then a couple of months later, my grandma passed. So it was just it was a, such a bizarre time. And I actually thought CrossFit working out exercise was going to be my go-to but it turned out it wasn't I couldn't I couldn't put on that brave face I couldn't follow any programming I was I just wasn't mentally there and you know and that took it took me maybe seven eight months of not really training I, th I feel like I needed it I needed some time off mm. and then since I've gone back I've just I've just fallen in love with it again and my mojo's back and you know it's kind of like it's it's doing what i need it to do at the moment you know it's it's pushing me and yes you know we're we're in lockdown but i'm proud that i took the time off when i could have just plowed through and then maybe you know burnt out you know but everyone's different some people when they if that has happened to them they would just throw their throw, throw themselves into a gym but for me there were other priorities um i needed to focus on my dad was a ex-police officer so you know he's he's totally with me Every every step, so yeah, yeah, I'm happy. Come through it, absolutely. Stronger. Yeah, you know, I yeah, I absolutely believe. I've got a different. I don't take things as seriously as, as I did before. So I was very much. I'd have to do every program, every program session. Um, if I didn't PB or didn't get close to, it, I'd be get frustrated and I'd go home and you know get I'd be annoyed with it. Whilst now, I just take it. I just yeah. think there are so many other things going on, yeah. and. You know, yes, I still push myself to the nth degree and enjoy being in that pain cave, but I don't, you know, I am a lot more kind of carefree with it. And that's because of, you know, what happened. Don't compare yourself to me, you, any other CrossFit athlete you have seen. Um, everyone's on their own journey. And I would say they would they just get so much out of it, so much out of it. And I think there are so many misconceptions that you have to, be really fit and you have to have abs and you've got to be good at you know every single movement when <laughs> when, when that isn't my mind of lost my I haven't seen mine since lockdown started I love helping people to see that CrossFit is it is for everyone it is for everyone you know my mum's had a spinal operation in the past and she's looking at starting um, I've got friends for example like yourself who said they you know you'd never consider the idea of doing CrossFit because of everything you'd seen and you didn't you didn't put yourself in that category and now you're more obsessed than I am <laughs> hence, um, oh, hence it. That's that. uh, I love watching people's opinions change mm. after their first session they are uncomfortable you know you're not, you're not gonna do a f your first wad and come out of it thinking yeah I really enjoyed that you know you will enjoy it maybe after 10 minutes after you've recovered and not to be scared don't be scared of it because you you're surrounded by people who are all rooting for you yeah. and all want you to get the most out of it. You could have been a crossfitter for 10 years and that same mentality is still there. Mm -hmm. um, or you could have just walked through the door. Personally, I could never go back to a mainstream gym um, because I wouldn't have that community around me. I couldn't, I couldn't live without it, to be fair. Mm -hmm. it's, been, it's been tough over a lot during lockdown and it, now it's slowly, things are slowly starting to get back to normal, but I'm glad, I'm glad we'll be back soon. I think it's it's understanding your parameters. So I've I've been working out with people who have not left their house for three months, and they are genuinely still worried about COVID nineteen. And you know, just being around people is a, is a huge deal. Communicate your stresses. If you are worried about the virus, if you're worried about the setup of the gym, ask the questions um, because then your expectations will be met, so to speak. Don't rush into it. Don't rush into thinking, I have to go back to the gym five times a week. Mix it up a little bit, continue with the home workouts, and then also, you know, slowly integrate yourself back into the gym environment. I think it would be shock for everyone, and I think everyone is, you know, especially, you know, people like us, we are itching to get back into that community feel, you know, when we're doing workouts, you know, you can look over to your left and someone's struggling, you look over to your right and someone's on the floor dying, not literally. But I'm I'm going to gradually do it because I think I I want to do it in a real realistic fashion and I don't just want to go full power. It's a huge transition. We were completely in lock, locked down. 
we weren't even allowed to leave the house pretty much to then having our freedom again I think it's going to take a little bit of getting used to but not just from a mental perspective but for your body as well you know your body's probably been used to training outside um, with less equipment and then suddenly you're bringing new things into the mix so I would personally say just don't rush it and enjoy enjoy the freedom again be sensible you know the people who you're around you've all worked together um, and also from a box perspective you know a lot of them haven't been helped out by the government and the fact that the community is strong enough to keep the boxes going I think just shows is testament to the communities there. Making herself at home, that's what I like to see. Yeah. It's a water filter. Keep yeah. hydrated kids. Look at these roots. I literally know I've got brown hair. I'm not a natural blonde. <laughs> My secret's out. Uh, I'm not a natural blonde. It's, it's, it was such a unique situation. Mm. So when I went into lockdown, working in events, I literally just stopped working overnight. So everything was cancelled. So to me, every night was a Friday night. So no one was telling me what time I had to wake up, what time I had to go to bed. I didn't, I didn't have anything to do. Um, and I think, I, I, I'm not really, I think I had a mini meltdown in that I just, I, I love routine and I just, I didn't have any. So I ate, I drank, easily put on a stone. Um, and I was, I think in January, Feb, I was at a really positive kind of, positive mindset. I'd lost some weight, I was feeling really good, and then COVID hit, and then suddenly the whole world went into shutdown. And I think one of the biggest things I've had to kind of, not just in lockdown, but just overcome, and I think when you put weight on, your insecurities come out, and you yeah. can be perceived as being super confident, but I think a lot of women, especially women, and at the moment fitness is such, it's, it's, it's the young word, isn't it? Yeah. And women, women with muscles sometimes are frowned upon. It's a lot, you know, sometimes it's a lot more difficult to dress and find things which suit you. Try and blend in, but really you actually should just be proud of the muscles you have, the body shape you've, you've, you've earned. And I think that's probably been one of my biggest struggles growing up, being comfortable, being muscly. Like, I'm just naturally a muscly person, you know. I, when I was born, I had glutes and thighs and calves. I am my father's daughter in the sense of, you know, we are, I just grow muscle for the fun of it. Which, <laughs> which, which I like. That's I've got, a some, nice I've got some crazy traps. Um, trying to get skinny jeans on is, is a challenge. Um, but I'm slowly getting back into kind of a confident mindset now. Um, but that's because my nutrition's under control again. I'm not drinking as much, um, and we, you know, we are coming out of lockdown, which I think is going to be, yeah, a huge thing. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you, Sarah, for coming along My today. Pleasure. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah. <laughs> what <laughs> did we do? <laughs> I went to a toilet a lot. I was so nervous. Yeah, I was about 18, I think I counted. Um, yes, Doreen. Alvis, we're on camera. Who's a little gobshite? Alvis is. Alvis! I'm in the lockdown, lad. I'm lad. I'm in that club. <laughs> Literally, I'm like, let's go, <laughs> suck it in. <laughs> Don't even know what I was trying to say. Don't zoom in on my face when I'm working out. You walk about yourself. <laughs>